Joining us now on the programme, Tom Purslove, the Minister for Justice and Tackling Illegal Migration. Uh, Mr Purslove, great to have you on the programme this morning. Um, look, I wonder if we can just start from, 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 from first principles. What is the rationale for essentially forcibly repatriating people who arrive in this country seeking asylum to Rwanda for processing? So what is absolutely clear is that it is completely unacceptable to continue to be in this situation where people pay evil people smugglers putting their lives in their hands with the only consideration being to make a profit for those people smugglers and all the risks that that involves. We saw in November the terrible consequences when this goes wrong. We cannot continue to have that happen and of course there's a moral imperative to take action. That's precisely what we're doing through our new plan for immigration and through the steps that we set out yesterday and I think this new economic development partnership with Rwanda is an important intervention, one of a number of interventions to take action to address this issue and I think it will help to shift the dial. But just in terms of the rationale that we have had from, from both your boss at the Home Office, Priti Patel, but also from the Prime Minister, I keep being told that the majority of people who are arriving on boats such as the ones we're showing our viewers right now are, are, are economic migrants. I'm just wondering what the source is for that. I'm afraid there's terrible interruption on the line, so I couldn't oh. hear your question. I'm very sorry. <laughs> It's all right, Minister, I'll, tr I'll try and ask again. What is the evidence base for the assertion from the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary that the majority, the overwhelming majority, according to Priti Patel, of people arriving in small boats are economic migrants? So what is very clear is that around 70% of the individuals who are arriving are single adult males. But my point is this, that nobody should be coming to our country via small boat, whether that be males, whether that be women, whether that be children. Everybody is leaving what are fundamentally safe countries. There are perfectly functioning asylum systems in France and in other EU countries, and people should be using them when they're in those countries rather than making these perilously sure. unsafe journeys. So we have to take steps to address this. That's precisely what we are doing. And I think that this is an important intervention that dramatically shifts the dynamic, whilst also providing opportunities and sanctuary in Rwanda for individuals who wish to have that. Sure, I, I, and I'm sorry to labour the point, Minister, but again, the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary have both claimed that part of the rationale for this is that the majority of people arriving in small boats are, are economic migrants. I'm just again asking where the data is on that. We've asked the Home Office for it plenty of times. It's never been produced. Indeed, the Refugee Council suggests actually a significant majority of people who arrive in small boats are actually successful in their asylum claims, that they're not economic migrants at all. The key principle here is that nobody should be getting in a small boat to come to the United Kingdom. We, quite rightly, have a rich and proud history in this country of providing sanctuary for thousands of people over the years. And you look at recent events with Ukraine and with Afghanistan, where we've established bespoke schemes and we'll continue to do that. But what we can't have and what we can't accept is people putting their lives in the hands of these evil criminal gangs. That's why we think it's important to take these steps. And that's why we're, we're pursuing this with Digger. We think this is an important intervention that we're making as part of the much wider package of reforms that we're introducing. Yeah, I, I, I will note that, again, I have asked that question and the evidence base has not been brought forward, so perhaps the government can stop maintaining that the majority of people coming across the channel are economic migrants without giving us the, the, the detail in all of this. But whilst I think plenty of people will agree with you that something needs to be done about the problems in the channel with those small boats, I mean, how long before this, this scheme gets started? I mean, before it gets started, aren't we likely to see actually an increase in the number of people heading over the channel, because you've just announced that at some point, ill-defined in the future, there'll be a more draconian system in place. Isn't the likelihood that for the next few weeks we're going to see increased numbers because of the announcement that your boss made? Well, that, of course, lends itself to the suggestion that the policy that we have announced will be successful in terms of deterring people from making these journeys in the first place. Um, the fact is that there are 80 million people... Not numbers. Um, you can see that you have driven up numbers as a result of this. Not everybody can come to the United Kingdom. Uh, you, you concede, though, that you have, will drive up numbers for the, next, for the next period, however long it is, until this scheme comes in, because you have announced, essentially, draconian measures further down the line. You accept that? No, the point that I would make is that we are determined to get on 
and deliver this policy as quickly as possible without needless delay. Um, that is our determined position. Um, of course, there's been the negotiations with Rwanda, which have been concluded with the signing of this Economic Development Partnership. We are now getting into the stage where we implement this policy quickly. Anybody who's arrived in the United Kingdom from the 1st of January is in scope to be relocated to Rwanda um, if they've arrived through illegal means. Um, mm -hmm. That is, of course, an important point to get across. So if you've arrived since then, it could well be that you are transferred as part of this arrangement. Can, can, can we just ask, uh, uh, why Rwanda? I mean, how safe is that country? I mean, you know, luckily, I mean, they haven't had a genocide in almost 30 years, which is great, but the record on human rights, particularly LGB, is, is pretty sketchy. Human Rights Watch report published last year found evidence that the Rwandan authorities had detained over a dozen gay and transgender people ahead of a June 2021 conference. This has all taken place, presumably, whilst your department has been negotiating with Rwanda. We have seen, I have to say, some appalling stereotypes thrown around in the last 24 hours since this announcement has sorry, been sorry, made. Minister, Rwanda what are you talking about? Strides uh, minister, no, sorry, hang, sorry. Hang on a minute, let me ask the According to the Foreign let Office, the, the Foreign Office, the Foreign Office travel advice for heading to Rwanda reads this. Homosexuality remains frowned upon by many. It's not illegal, but it can be frowned upon. LGBT individuals can experience discrimination and abuse, including from local authorities. That is the advice given to gay people in this country by the Foreign Office just round the corner from you. The fact is that Rwanda has made huge strides forward over the last three decades. Um, it has a female majority parliament, it has an anti-discrimination law that runs right through its constitution and it's also just worth making the point that the UNHCR themselves place refugees in Rwanda as part of um, their schemes which of course is providing sanctuary to them and they have a, a rich and proud history rather like we do in this country of providing sanctuary to people who need it. But, but also let me just make a further point because I think this is crucial in all of this, that in terms of individuals being considered for relocation to Rwanda, that will be managed on a case-by-case -case basis, taking proper account of everybody's circumstances before any such transfer happens. That is the right and proper way of managing this responsibly, making sure, and the key criteria is this, that it is safe for them. Allow me, perhaps, and to, to draw a comparison or, 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 you know, between two, two things that are going on at the moment. And many people are, are doing this at the moment. You know, even if we accepted that the majority of people coming across the channel were economic migrants, which we don't, there are hundreds of people, the other side of the channel, who want to pay money to come to this country to try and earn and, indeed, to pay money to the Exchequer. Compare and contrast that with the wife of the Chancellor who left Downing Street because people had the temerity to criticise her for paying £30,000 to the government to avoid paying tax here. Um, I don't think that um, the two things are comparable. And the bottom line here is very clear that nobody should be paying evil people smugglers to make dangerous crossings of the English Channel. I couldn't be clearer about that point. No one doubts that. No one doubts that. The question is whether or not this is the best way in which to do it. I mean, in parallel to all of this, of course, we now understand that the Royal Navy will be taking responsibility for the channel. Now, despite the fact that we've seen, you know, historic cuts to the fleet ever since the Conservatives came into power in 2010. But surely the broader point about the involvement of the Royal Navy is that border force and by proxy, your department can't do the job. I categorically reject that. This is a issue that is of huge concern to the British people. There is no one single intervention that will resolve this of itself. And it's right that we have a cross-government response to this challenge. Um, and actually, the Royal Navy have an awful lot of expertise um, that they can bring to bear through the command and control structure that is now in place adding additional resource to this work. And of course, by introducing the interventions that we are, it is likely that the dynamic will change. What we've previously had until now is that individuals have wanted to be picked up and they've wanted to be spotted because they've wanted to enter the UK asylum system. What isn't acceptable, and I know this from speaking to people in Kent, is beach landings happening, people turning up, there's a border security risk associated with that as well. And so I think adding that capacity, drawing on that Royal Navy experience and expertise is actually important as we get to grips with this issue, get this under control, we cannot have uncontrolled migration into this country in the way that we've seen of late. Um, Minister, final question. Can you guarantee that this scheme will ever be introduced? 
We are absolutely determined, as the Prime Minister set out yesterday, to introduce this scheme, to operationalise it. This is a big step forward through this economic development partnership, um, helping to tackle this challenge that we are facing, whilst also working with Rwanda to provide opportunities for people who are relocated there. Um, the status quo just isn't acceptable. While people are making these dangerous journeys, risking their lives, there is an imperative on us to act. We have to change that dynamic, and that's precisely what we're doing. And the PM has said very clearly that we will do everything necessary to make this happen. Uh, Tom Pudge, a very busy day for you, no doubt, so we'll let you crack on with it. Thanks very much for joining us.